Hey guys, what's going on? This is Coach Anish Kassab here with Kassab Performance Training in the University of Rhode Island Powerlifting Club. Coming to you guys today from Primal Athlete Training Center. You can check out our website at www.primalatc.com. Okay guys, well for those of you that do not know, Travis Mash came to uh, Primal not too long ago to teach me, Coach Matt and Coach Dan, the Olympic lifts, which uh, of course are the clean and jerk and the snatch. While he was here, he's also a very well-known powerlifter for those of you that do not know. He's uh, right now he's a, uh, an Olympic weightlifting coach, but for a while he was a very well-known powerlifter and he trains uh, some of the best raw powerlifters in the country right now. So while he was here, he gave us plenty of advice on both Olympic weightlifting and on powerlifting. So I decided to separate the, the lessons learned by Travis Mash videos into a powerlifting session and uh, an Olympic weightlifting video as well. So right now I'm gonna give you guys some of the, the tips that Travis gave me for powerlifting. And uh, the first one is to train for the sport. So uh, Travis basically says that what he sees all the time is everybody's looking up how to get a stronger squat, bench press, and deadlift, when they forget that it's not just about uh, you know, getting those numbers. It's also about being able to hit those numbers in competition. So, so like, for example, uh, he, said, he told me to start squatting and deadlifting in the same sessions regularly. So on the days that I squat, also deadlift right after, because in competition, you're gonna have to both squat and deadlift in the same day. He told me that he trains countless athletes that before they came to him when they weren't squatting and deadlifting in the same day, they were always like having great squatting sessions in their competitions and then just ultimately failing on their deadlifts because by the end of the day, they were just so tired because their bodies weren't ready for it. So you need to get your body used to that and your body will adapt to the stimulus of squatting and deadlifting in the same day. You will be able to hit your max numbers in the same day as long as you train for it regularly. So that was the first one. Another thing was to pause all, all your reps on the bench press. So Travis said, forget the tap and go bench. Just every single rep, just pause and press. He actually told me that he can pause press more than he can uh, just a regular tap and go bench now just because he's been pause pressing for years. In a uh, powerlifting competition, you're going to have to pause your rep at the bottom of the bench and let the bar come to a complete stop before the, uh, the judge tells you to press. So once you're told to press, um, that's when you can finally press the bar off your chest. So uh, Travis told me to practice that, to pause all my reps on the bench press, don't just focus on you know, putting up as much, weight, as much weight as I can. He told me to focus on my form, stay tight in the bottom of the bench, pause and then press on every single rep. Another one was to restart all deadlift reps. So that's the same idea. Instead of keeping the tension, like say you're doing like a set of six on your deadlift and you're kind of doing like a tap and go where the weight is just gonna touch the floor and then you're just gonna deadlift it back up again. Literally, let the weight go to the floor slowly, let the bar go and then reset and then pull the bar again because you always have to deadlift from a dead stop in competition. You're never going to be under tension. So doing multiple reps while already under tension is not going to help you necessarily in competition, according to Travis anyway. So he told me to restart all my deadlift reps. So if you're doing like a set of six on the deadlift, deadlift, down, restart, grab the bar, and pull again from a dead stop. Okay, guys, he also told me to squat low every single rep, like literally, like Olympic weightlifter style, just ask to grass, just so that you don't end up getting called out in a, a powerlifting meet uh, for death. You know, you don't want to get red lighted for death. He told me that his athletes never miss a squat simply because they squat ass to grass. So they'll never get red lighted on a squat simply because they're not hitting depth. They will always hit depth. So he said to squat as low as you can. And uh, speaking of squatting, he also told me that uh, Squatting close and squatting wide are going to use the same amount of muscle fibers, like the same number of muscle fibers. They'll use different fibers, but they will use the same number of muscle fibers. So you will be able to squat the same amount of weight you can wide as you can close, for the most part, not in all cases. Of course, flexibility and mobility is a big uh, concern here. And you know, there's other factors that come into play. But for the most part, you will be relatively close in terms of weight on your close stand squat and your wide stand squat because you're using the same amount of fibers. However, when you wide stance squat, you're going to be incorporating the muscles of your inner thighs, as you call your adductors. They're going to bring your legs in. That's the function of them. So when you're squatting with a wide stance, you're going to be working those adductors far more than you would with a, a narrow stance. And you're also going to be opening up your hips and becoming more flexible and mobile in the hips simply by squatting and deadlifting with a wide stance. So squatting and deadlifting with a wide stance will work your close stance because you're going from wide, where you have to stretch, to close, where you don't have to worry about stretching anymore. But if you always train narrow, you will not necessarily be able to go out wide to do like a sumo deadlift or wide stance squat, simply because you may not have the flexibility and mobility. So squatting wide will work your close stance squat. However, squatting close will not necessarily work your wide stance squat, but they will both most likely be able to put the same amount of numbers. Of course, according to comfort and everything like that, you will most likely be able to put up the same amount of weight or relatively the same amount of weight. 
So that's just something to keep in mind. Wide can always come back in close, but close will not always be able to go back out wide. So another thing was to uh, start squatting, deadlifting, and bench pressing twice every single week. So a lot of raw lifters will kind of uh, think more about muscle building rather than they will training for the sport of powerlifting. So a lot of people will like bench press on their chest day, squat on leg day, deadlift on back day, and they'll do that once a week each of the lifts, just once a week. Then the following week, they'll probably do it with heavier weight or some shit, whatever. What Travis was telling me was to train for the sport. So if your sport is the squat, deadlift, and bench, you need to be practicing those as frequently as you possibly can while getting enough rest so that every session, so that you get the most out of every single session. So he said squat and deadlift in the same day at the beginning of the week. The day after that, have a bench press day. Take a day off, squat and deadlift again, and then have a bench press day the next day and then uh, take the weekend off. So it should be most of the time like a four day a week plan. Of course you can do some stuff on your off days, but that's just some basic programming that Travis gave me. And um, he was also telling me that at the beginning of the week, you always, when, you're, when your body is fresh, when you're feeling totally great, you should squat and deadlift and bench press using competition form. So pause bench, regular squat, and um, deadlift to whatever, whatever form you deadlift, sumo, uh, conventional, whatever, same thing with the squat, wide stance, close stance, high bar, low bar, Olympic shoes, uh, chucks, whatever, whatever the case may be. You want to practice your competition form because you need to be ready for competition. So at the beginning of the week, practice for, um, do all your competition lifts. At the end of the week, when you're squatting and deadlifting for a second session and benching for a second session, that's when you can focus on weakness. So if your weakness on the bench is locking out the bench, you might want to do like a bench press off like a two board or something like that. Or, uh, you know, if you're, you have trouble getting out of the hole on a squat, do like a pause squat. If you have trouble locking out your squats, do like a high box squat. You know, if you're having trouble coming off the floor on a deadlift, do some deficits. Or if you're having trouble keeping form on your deadlift, I would recommend like pausing at the knee, holding the deadlift at the knee, and then coming up all the way through. So that's just some examples of some of the lifts that you could do on your weakness days. So the beginning of the week, competition style, full range of motion. End of the week. Um, either add or take away some range of motion, work on your weaknesses basically. And then when you come back this way, you're working both your competition lift and at the same time, you're building up what's holding back your competition lift. Kind of like what I explained in my train your weaknesses video. Uh, so another one was uh, push press will work your bench press better than a strict overhead press. I thought this one was kind of weird, but Travis told me that he's done the testing uh, you know, a ton of times and uh, he's found that with his athletes, a strict overhead press, just standing and pressing overhead with the barbell or dumbbells or whatever, does not have as good as a, of an effect on the bench press as a push press does. Travis told me that he made the switch with his athletes to start push pressing instead of strict overhead pressing, and the bench press numbers went way up. I mean, I don't know. I haven't done that for myself, but uh, you know, I'm kind of incorporating it into my program right now, so I guess I'll let you guys know at some point in the future if that really works or not for, for myself. I mean, Travis's guys are far more experienced, lifting a ton more weight than we are, so who knows? It might just be different in, in those terms, but he told me that push press will work in bench press better than an overhead press will, so I'll take his advice for now and see if that works for myself. Uh, so another one was, uh, I thought this was really cool, to mock the meat as you get closer to competition. So I believe our first competition's in November, something like that, I'm not really not sure. But basically, Travis told me, like, maybe when you're a month away or two months away from your competition, you should start mocking the meat at the end of every week. So that means squat, bench press, and deadlift all in the same day. And when you do that, you need to do it with commands. So, you know, squat command, rack command, press command. So you need to have somebody shouting out these commands at you all while, uh, you know, obviously he recommended doing it with a little bit of an audience. You know, just to practice for competition, just to make sure you're not going to get red-lighted on any of your lifts. So, yeah, basically just make sure you know what you're doing for the meet. Make sure you're prepared, you're ready. You're not just going in there blind and just kind of going to do what everybody tells you to do. Be prepared, be ready. This way when you go in there, it's just another day. It's just another day of training. Um, okay, uh, this one was pretty cool too. Travis said that if you are not training at 85% or above, basically anything less than 85% of your one rep max, your nervous system has a different effect. Your nervous system considers it a different exercise. So by training at 85% or above, you will always be improving your one rep max. Simply because your nervous system will consider that a heavy lift. It'll consider that a different exercise than like doing the same lift at like 75%. I thought this was a little bit strange. Travis said that this mainly works for Olympic weightlifting. He said like things like technique days are not necessarily going to help your one rep max for Olympic weightlifting. What's going to help your one rep max is like five sets of singles on like a clean and jerk at 85%. You know, snatching at 85%. He said bench pressing, squatting, and deadlifting, it'll work pretty much the same way, 
but you want to include higher volume with powerlifting. So you want to do multiple sets at 85%, multiple sets at 90%, multiple sets at 95%, 100%, whatever the case may be. So what Travis told me to do was to use a little bit of periodization in my training. So week one of a program, build up to 85% on all my lifts, bench press, squat, and deadlift. Do that for like three sets of five reps, you know, four sets of five reps, whatever you want to do. So multiple sets at 85%, you need to train your body to lift heavy shit. Okay, so you cannot just be staying at 75% the entire time because your body isn't being trained to lift the heaviest that it can lift. So if you're training at 85% all the time, you are literally training your body to just be a brute, to just lift up heavy shit. And that's really, really, really important in powerlifting, obviously, because that's what you're going to be doing in competition. You're going to be lifting heavy shit once. So you need to have heavy weight on you constantly. Travis thinks the best number is 85% or above. So he said one week train at 85% for like three sets of five. Following week, the three sets of five is just an example. Once again, it could be three sets of six, three sets of four, whatever you want. As long as it's 85% and you're using good form and technique, that's what's most important. The following week, jump up to 90%. The week after that, jump up to 95%. Take a deload period. Restart the following week, 85%, 90 95%. However, add five pounds more to all your lifts, if you can. Then the following week, have a one rep max test. So make sure you're testing your one rep max after all of this. Make sure everything is working. He said to test as frequently as you can, but not too frequently where you're literally just doing heavy singles all the time. Make sure you're actually strength training. Heavy singles, heavy triples, heavy doubles, heavy sets of five, heavy sets of six. Make sure you're training your body for strength and you're only testing strength when you need to see if your program is working. That's the most important thing. All right, so uh, yeah, use periodization like I just said. And then another one was to always keep track of your one rep max. So not everybody knows their one rep max, guys. Now, your one rep max is literally whatever the most amount of weight you've ever lifted is. So don't always go by the math. So for example, uh, one of my athletes deadlifted 435 for two reps. The math says, uh, you know, assuming, you know, 435 would be like 90%. You know, most people would get 90% for about two to three uh, reps. So I plugged it in in a, a calculator. And his one rep max came out to be 480. On a one rep max test day, the highest he got to was 460. That's a solid deadlift, but you need to know your one rep max, so you actually need to lift that weight. Don't just live and die by the numbers all the time and by the math all the time. Make sure you are doing the math based on your personal record for a one rep max. So make sure you have actually lifted the weight and not just kind of using that as a number, okay? In most situations, of course, certain situations call for different things. Like if you're at 90%, but you're getting like 10 reps, obviously that's not fucking 90%. You know, obviously you need to uh, increase the one rep max in one way or another. But you need to be testing your one rep max on a regular basis, probably every like month and a half to two months, according to Travis. Okay, and assistance work is important, but focus more on the big three. So by the big three, I mean the power lifts, the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. So Travis was telling me that assistance is, uh, is great. You know, dumbbell presses are great. Uh, you know, whatever, pause squats. All this stuff is awesome. But when you're a powerlifter competing in powerlifting competitions, you cannot forget what your competition lifts are. The regular squat, regular deadlift, regular bench press. So don't just spend all of your time doing a bunch of exercises for muscle building. Spend the majority of your time in the gym training the main movements, the squat, the deadlift, and the bench. Then after that, you know, after you bench press for like half an hour, do, do your back work quick. Do your shoulder work quick, you know, and focus on that as well. But keep in mind, do not forget what your competition is. Do not forget what you're training for, guys. You know, I know it's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard. Like, at some point you say to yourself, okay, being strong is awesome, but I want to be strong and I want to look good and I want to be big. And that's all well and good. But if you're training for a competition, you got to think, what do you want? Do you want to be better at the competition or do you want to look like a bodybuilder? I understand everybody wants both, but you can't necessarily have the best of both worlds. You can do your best to get that way. But if you really want to excel at powerlifting, you really just need to put all your focus on your lifts. That's the most important thing. Don't put all your focus on your six pack. Don't put all your focus on how big your fucking shoulders are, how big your fucking biceps are. You know, that's not the most important thing when you're training for a competition. If that's really important to you, then by all means do it. You know, I'm not saying don't focus on those things. If that's how you feel and that's how you want to lift, that's fine. But if you want to really excel at powerlifting, it's like any other sport. You really need to concentrate on those lifts. The majority of your time should be spent squatting deadlifting, and bench pressing. All right, guys, so basically the takeaway point from Travis was 
you know, lift relatively heavy, 85% or above, use multiple reps, multiple sets, and train for the fucking sport. He said that's what most people always forget about powerlifting is that the sport is the squat, deadlift, and bench press. They end up focusing on things like bicep curls and all this back work and all these different crazy exercises. And these things are all well and good, but you can't forget what you need to focus most on, your squat, your deadlift, and your bench press. All right, guys, well, pretty soon I'm going to be making another video on some of the Olympic lifting um, advice that Travis gave me. Now, me personally, I'm not an Olympic weightlifter, but I do enjoy the Olympic lifts, so that will probably be a lengthy video as well. And, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can email me at kasabtraining at gmail.com. And I really hope you guys are enjoying your summer. You know, you're lifting. What the fuck was that? Oh, whatever. It sounded like the building was about to come down my bed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, guys, just... Once again, just focus on all your lifts. I hope you guys are you know, enjoying your summer and I really hope you're taking some of this advice and really, really trying to incorporate it into your programming. So yeah, guys, train for your sport. Keep lifting, get strong, eat big. Don't worry about stupid shit like a six pack and all that, guys. Just fucking lift, get big, get strong. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Peace.